Happy Sabbath! How are you all? I hope you all had a blessed week. I love this week. A few days ago, we had some rain, right? Isn't it wonderful? We needed that after this long drought. Tonight, I continue to pray to the Lord to bless each one of you, that He'll be with you and give you love, joy, and peace, and to protect you all the time and your family. You know, tonight, this Vesper, we're going to focus on the topic that is recorded in the Adventist Review because this is the week of prayer. You remember every November, the first Sabbath is the week of prayer. You know, we have heard many people say they doubt God is here because they don't feel God's presence or they don't feel God is hearing their prayers. Is God really here? I had wonder about that for many years. I wonder when I pray, is God listening? But from my reading and my research, you know God tries harder than anyone else in the world to be with us, to connect with us. You know, throughout both the Old and the New Testament, God repeatedly say, I am with you. And this is his most frequent promise. Do you remember in the beginning, he was with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? And he visited them in the cool of the day. Even after the fall, he instructed Israel, his people, to build a sanctuary for him because he wanted to be in their midst. You can read that in Exodus 25, verse 8. Furthermore, he knew our physical limitation. So he gave us from the very beginning until now, the weekly Sabbath. Because every seventh day, wherever we are, if we are willing, he will spend a whole day exclusively with us. And that's not all. The ultimate reality of God with us is Jesus. Even his name, Emmanuel, means that he is God with us. This is what the Bible says. Matthew 1, verse 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. And again in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. But you may say he has already ascended to heaven 2,000 years ago. But do you remember before Jesus' ascension? He promised something. Matthew chapter 28, 20. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He said in this verse that he would be with us always, even to the very end. So exactly how is he with us? John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So he gave us the Holy Spirit to abide with us and in us until the end of time when he comes the second time. And can you just hear the excitement in this verse? And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. But before we see him face to face at that time, God is always with us through his Holy Spirit. 
if we allow him to. We may not feel his presence, but that doesn't make it any less true. Deuteronomy 31.8 And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. And this is still God's promise for us today because he loves us so much. The author of this article said, on a recent flight from Houston to Chicago, he was seated next to an executive for an information technology company. This executive flew all over the world and was often gone from home. And he missed his family immensely and had a phone number exclusively for their use. Normally, his calls were screened, but his family could call him at any time and they knew he would answer. He said, no voices sound sweeter to me than those of my wife and children. And I would stop everything to answer the phone and connect with them. And this conversation reminded us that we also have a direct line to our Heavenly Father. What did the Bible say? Psalms 145, 18. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Do you know, God never feels like us are interrupting him when we reach out to him in prayer. God never feels like we are interrupting him when we reach out to him in prayer. When we are sick or discouraged, he reaches down to comfort us or direct others to comfort us on his behalf. And when we're excited, we can call out to him. We have a one-to-one -one connection with God. For Ellen White, the ultimate reality of the love of God is through Jesus. And this is what she said. Since Jesus came to dwell with us, we know that God is acquainted with our trials and sympathizes with our grief. Every son and daughter of Adam may understand that our Creator is the friend of sinners. For in every doctrine of grace, every promise of joy, every deed of love, every divine attraction presented in the Savior's life on earth, we see God with us. And so, we are never alone. An older woman told her chaplain a story. She said, as a child, she was buried in the rubble three times during World War II. She wasn't afraid as much as she was lonely. She wasn't sure whether anybody even knew she was there. She thought if no one knew she was there, then who was going to look for her? God knows where we are. The Bible said God's presence is manifested in whatever manner we need. For the orphan, he is the everlasting father, Isaiah 9, 6. For the newborn baby, he is the compassionate mother, Isaiah 49, 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. And for the lonely, he is the omnipotent companion that says that he will be with us always. Psalm 68, 6. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. In other verse, for the Lord hears the cries of the needy. And for the sick and for the deserted and for those going through the valley of death, he promised, I will be with you. Isaiah 43, 2. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. 
When you go through rivers of difficulties, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Whenever we recognize God's presence, it will bring joy. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forever. That's what King David said. So, no matter what we are experiencing, no matter where we are, God is always with us, helping us to face life with confidence and hope. So, how do we make God's presence a reality in our life? God is constantly seeking to reveal Himself to us in every aspect of our lives. He urges us, encourages us, to seek Him wholeheartedly. In Jeremiah twenty nine twelve to fourteen, God said, "Then you will call upon me, and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you." Says the Lord. God knows our problems, and He wants to get through a whole bunch of blockades just to reach us to help us. Thus, it is essential that we remove barriers and distractions, pray and seek Him with all our hearts. In doing so, the channel between God and us. Will open up, and there will be communicative connection. So, two points from this verse in Jeremiah that we need to call on Him, and number two, seek Him with all our hearts. So, what does call on Him mean? You know, in life, we distance ourselves from God. When we're distracted by never-ending work commitments and a busy lifestyle, so a lot of time it is not God's problem when we complain that He is not with us. The problem lies within us that we don't have time to be with Him. So talk to Him every day about the issues in your life. Share your life with Him. Let him guide and bless you. You know, the author of this article gave us an example. He said, a few weeks ago, he was having a hard time sleeping. A frustrating situation kept replaying in his mind. He was restless, so he got up and tried watching TV. But he kept hearing a voice softly saying, "Call on me." Call on me. So he opened his Bible to Acts, chapter two, twenty five, twenty six, and this is what it says: I saw the Lord always before me, because He is at my right hand; I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices; my body also will rest in hope. After he read that. A sense of peace and calm came over him, and he took his situation to God in prayer. And God's presence brought joy and hope to him, just like what this scripture said. We have he has you have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. With that, he fell asleep. Making God's presence a reality is by calling on Him. Now, second point: make God's presence a reality is by seeking Him. How to seek Him? We are told to diligently seek God every day. The author said, "If we see our spouse." Or want to spend time with our spouse only every few weeks, 
for sure we would not have much of a marriage. And it doesn't matter how many years we've been married, 30, 40, or 50 years. We should still spend time intentionally with each other. When we love, we want to learn more about each other. Likewise, we are to be intentional about seeking God. When we set aside our distractions and take time to seek God, we will be blessed by knowing Him. The Bible said we will be transformed by the power of His resurrection. So let us decide to seek God's presence every day and call on Him. He is never farther than a prayer away. Happy Sabbath.